My sister finds herself in a precarious situation, struggling financially to meet her basic needs. To compound matters, she has decided to become pregnant once again, despite our clear warnings about her inability to support another child. It's frustrating because she seems driven by her own selfish desires rather than considering the consequences. My name is Mia, and I feel like life has thrust me into an incredibly challenging situation. I'm at a crossroads and my mind is in turmoil. I need your guidance to make the right decision. Should I step in and raise my sister's children as my own? I've always longed to be a mother, and Emma's children are truly adorable. This could be my chance to fulfill the maternal role I've always wanted. But will their upbringing always serve as a constant reminder of the hardships she's put me through in her life? I'm 28 years old, living a fulfilling life with my long-term partner, William. We both have stable jobs and are doing well. However, my childhood was far from stable due to my mother's narcissism and my parents' constant absence. I was forced to take on the responsibility of raising my younger sister, Emma. Emma's life was chaotic as she bounced between relationships, leaving my father to wait for her return every time. She neglected her responsibilities as a mother, leaving me to care for Emma. I became fiercely protective of her, shielding her from harm as best as I could. Unfortunately, Emma has adopted some of our mother's self-centered traits and often manipulates me to meet her demands. Emma, now 26, has had two children with absent fathers, one during her college years and another during a trip with some unconventional acquaintances. She is currently living with my mother and claims to have found her soulmate. Emma and I are both accepting of the diverse family she has created, as long as they are content. However, as we grew older, we drifted apart until it seemed like history was repeating itself. Let me take you back to the evening when everything changed. It was 1 a.m. and a cold, rainy night when the doorbell startled me awake. Emma stood there, her exhaustion evident, clutching her two children, tears streaming down her face. Seeing her so vulnerable tore at my heart because she's like a daughter I've nurtured as a mother. Mia, please, I don't know what to do, she begged. Emma has left me with nothing, and I have nowhere else to turn. Can we stay at your house for a while? As previously mentioned, Emma is my ex-girlfriend, and I can't help but wonder if her intentions for seeking my help are entirely pure, despite my love for her and the children. I mean, I know who she is. She's always getting up to something. Emma. What exactly is going on? Mia. She began sobbing uncontrollably. Just come in, you're soaked. I accepted Emma and her children into my home without reservation. I knew having two children under the same roof would be difficult, but my protective instinct towards Emma kicked in, and I couldn't take the notion of putting my sister and her children out in the cold. I was expecting the worst, but to my surprise, the first few weeks were uneventful. I enjoyed having the kids here, and Emma seemed grateful for everything I did for her. We usually sat together and spoke about life. Emma and Emma were at odds because of the children. Emma didn't like having the kids around because she thought they were too young to be parents. They had a tremendous disagreement the night Emma arrived at my house and decided to end their relationships. Things suddenly changed, however. Emma began acting entitled, refusing to work or pay for household expenses. Instead, she spent her days relaxing and ignoring her parental responsibilities. At one point, she ceased feeding, washing, or even taking or talking to the children. All she did was sip some wine while acting suspiciously all over the place. She'd leave the house at weird hours and return inebriated. She kept knocking on my bedroom door all night, and when I opened it, I found her half-nude and inebriated. Emma, what's the matter with you? You cannot continue to act in this manner. I'll have to ask you to leave if you don't get your act together. Her look remained unchanged, and she simply laughed in my face and walked away. It's become so toxic that I feel terrible for the kids. 
They were going through exactly what I went through as a child with my parents. This was not something I desired. I tried calling her, but she always hung up on me. I claimed that I had no idea what she was going through. Mia, I adore Emma and couldn't live without her, and my heart aches knowing she's already moved on and begun dating Noah. Noah. Yes, Noah is a mutual acquaintance with Emma, and I can't allow this to happen. Emma, you have your children to consider. For the sake of these innocent lives, stop being entitled and start acting like a mother. Nothing has changed. I eventually began to handle the majority of her children's responsibilities. In addition to my career, I was responsible for two fully grown children. I would feed and care for them because her mother was unconcerned. As much as I enjoyed hearing the kids refer to me as their favorite aunt, I was concerned that they were living a lie. And one day, they'd have to return to reality. The atmosphere in the house became terrible, and I felt, I don't know, taken advantage of. She'd just run around the house like she was seven years old, with no responsibilities. I spoke with William, whom I've been dating for three years, and we're planning a wedding soon. But he simply shut me down, stating, this is between you and your sister. He's been wonderful to me for the past three years. We both work together to create this humble life. In the gym, William and I met. We both enjoyed working out and began dating soon after. He's a lovely person, he understands my emotional childhood trauma and encourages me to avoid my sister. He's been aloof since Emma arrived at our house. He insists that I cannot bear the burden of Emma and her children for the rest of my life and that I should ask them to go. But my protective nature toward Emma prevents me from doing so. I couldn't believe how William was behaving. This was very out of character for him. After all, he knew about my childhood and how pampered Emma could be. But I will never let those children suffer as a result of it. I wish he could understand what I was going through and just listen to my emotions like he always does. While we were all out in the yard, the kids were playing, and I was enjoying my evening coffee. Emma revealed a shocking revelation. I'm expecting. She spoke it as if it were nothing. I couldn't believe it, and I nearly splattered the hot coffee over my shirt. It took me about two minutes to process what she had just said. Emma. You're already trying to provide for yourself and two children, and now you want to add another life to the mix. Emma, who is the father? This is intolerable. What exactly are you doing? You must either begin contributing or find another place to live. So she stood there, dumbfounded, like she couldn't hear me while sipping her coffee. I could feel tears welling up in my eyes as I observed how unconcerned she was with everything that was going on due to her arrogant, reckless behavior. I simply cannot continue in this manner. I never experienced my own childhood because I was responsible for my sister. I can't let her rob me of my youth. She must accept responsibilities and begin acting like an adult. If she can go around merely getting pregnant while being unable to care for her children, if she can be this dumb, she might as well do it alone. Emma, you have a week to get a job, or I will ask you to leave. I walked away, yelling. I almost puked when I felt this gut-ripping pain in my stomach. I never planned for it to come to this, but I had to stop supporting her irresponsible behavior. Furthermore, I wanted a better life for her children, who are too young to deal with this. It felt like those kids were defenseless, and I was simply standing there watching as her mother mistreated them. As all of my early memories flooded back to me, Emma needs to start admitting her mistakes and making real changes in her life for the sake of her children. As a follow-up to my last post, I must confess that it has been a week since I requested Emma to leave the house. When she had found a decent place to live, and I've been second-guessing my decision ever since. Not because I'm concerned about Emma, but because I'm concerned for the kids. How can I abandon the children now that I know she is absolutely incapable of caring for them? Despite the fact that it has kept me awake at night, I cannot let her ruin my life as well. 
So I held my ground until last week, when Emma informed me one day. She would be moving to a residence on the opposite side of town the next day. I couldn't help but feel a wave of comfort rush over me as Emma packed her bags. The tension between us had reached unbearable proportions. I knew it was time for her to leave. But, just as I was going to assist her in loading her belongings into the car, I noticed something that made my blood run cold. A file from Emma's bag slipped out as she turned around to get her purse. Curiosity eventually got the best of me. And I snatched the file and stashed it in my coat. It was a file with the results of certain blood tests. And they'd done it on both parents to assure the fetus's wellness. My heart fell when I learned that Emma's unborn child's father was none other than Emma's new boyfriend, Noah. I don't know anything about Emma, and I've never met Noah. But my gut tells me Emma is completely unaware of the issue. I felt anger building up inside of me, and I couldn't believe what I was seeing. My brain was fatigued from trying to figure out how Emma could be so twisted and vengeful. Was this her way of retaliating against Emma for abandoning her? Or was it just a strange coincidence that my body froze there as I saw Emma's car go away from where I was standing? I couldn't even say goodbye to the kids before they went. I've been watching the news for days, wondering if I should ask Emma what's going on and if she even knows. I ultimately gave up and confronted Emma about it. I went to the address she provided me with nothing but the reports in my handbag, preparing a slew of questions for her and plotting the dispute that would ensue the entire time. I was speechless when I eventually saw her and just stood there. She gave me a stern look and made no move to dispute it, while I held out the report to see what she would say. Instead, she stated, I understand. I knew this would bother you. With a cold smile and calculating expression. I couldn't say anything. How could she be so heartless? Everything made sense all of a sudden. Emma's arrogant demeanor, refusal to work or pay for household finances, and complete disregard for the children's well-being. It was all part of a clever plan to hurt Emma and me. Her life's two antagonists. I wanted to contact Emma and see whether she was even aware of the situation. I was on the verge of driving up to Emma's house once because I was curious about my sister's baby's father. But I couldn't because of what had transpired. I've become so disconnected from reality that I can't remember the last time I had a quiet supper with William. Over the next few days, I couldn't get the image out of my thoughts. I couldn't believe someone I cared about and trusted could be so vicious. I felt stabbed in the back, and the pain was almost excruciating. One day, William came home from work and invited me to dinner. I didn't want to go at first, but after some consideration, I realized it was also unjust to him and agreed to meet him at our favorite restaurant. I showered and dressed to the nines. I just wanted to forget about Emma and the kids and the problem for one night and enjoy dinner and a good discussion. As I dressed, I had a glimmer of faith that my normal life would return. Then we drove our automobile to the restaurant. We were both quiet the entire ride there, but I assumed we'd have lots to chat about once we were sitting next to each other. I poured a glass of our favorite wine and started talking. We were discussing how far apart we were becoming and how our jobs were doing when he abruptly exclaimed, Mia, I can no longer do this. I want to split up. My eyes were wide open, and streams of tears started to fall as I mumbled, why? I can't see you suffering for the rest of your life because of Emma, but she's gone, William. Is that her? You are continually concerned about her and her children. You're never there. How long has it been since we last spoke? When was the last time we brought up our wedding? It astounded me that this was occurring to me. He was constantly speaking, but I swear his words were not reaching my ears. It felt like I was in a silent black and white film. I rose and walked away. Despite the fact that I could see him pursuing me, my body was screaming at me to keep moving. I grabbed a cab and dashed out the door. 
My life began to fall apart over the next few days. I went inside to lock myself up instead of going to work. He never returned to pick up his possessions after that evening. Instead, I received a text message that said, Call me when you're ready to talk. Because his clothes smell like him, I occasionally snuggle up in them at night and sit tightly. I must be behaving pitifully, right? My existence appears to be meaningless right now. After a few days, I began to think more critically, and my attempt at Emma grew stronger. After all, things started going wrong the instant she arrived. I then began to blame her for all of my difficulties and resolved never to see her face again. I was broken after all of that had suddenly ruined my life, but after two months, I recognized that I couldn't let Emma's actions define me. I have to get over it and go on. I immersed myself in work, devoting all of my efforts to it, and I began spending more time with friends, trying new things, and exploring new hobbies. When Child Protective Services called me one day, I was still reeling from the news that Noah was Emma's unborn child's father. The voice on the other end of the telephone informed me that they had been monitoring the situation and had decided to give me custody of Emma's two children. As I listened to them, my heart sank. My life today feels like a useless roller coaster with no destination. I'm still processing that William departed, and I was finally feeling like I had some control over my life. What about the new requirement imposed on children? Don't get me wrong, I adore them to the moon and back. But that can never be enough. Being an aunt is a unique feeling, but what about being a mother to your children? It appears that I don't know much. How am I ever going to pull this off? The sensation simply overcame me. What makes this possible? I asked Emma to leave my house two months ago. I had no idea how I was going to care for two young children, let alone offer them the love and attention they needed. However, once the initial shock wore off, a new sense of determination took its place. I knew I couldn't let these children fall between the cracks. I had to step up and take responsibility for the sake of these youngsters, who require the presence of a responsible adult in their lives. My youth flashed in front of my eyes. I suffered because of my parents, and I blamed them in part for Emma's fate. That would never happen to my niece and nephew. They're too young. No, no, no. I repeated myself loudly in my brain. I began the process of assuming custody of the children. I started to realize how much work I had ahead of me. There were numerous documents to complete, interviews to conduct, and appointments to keep. It felt like an endless process, and I questioned if I was in over my head at times. But I refused to let my doubts stop me. I devoted my time and energy to studying everything I could about parenting. From reading books on child development to discussing their experiences with other parents, I even reached out to Emma one day, hoping she could offer some advice. She is, after all, their mother, and she knows them inside and out. If I was going to do this, I needed to get to know the kids from her perspective, but she was uninterested in assisting. As I went through the complicated process of becoming a guardian, I realized how much these children needed me. It certainly gave my life a new meaning. With their mother's negligence and abandonment, they had already gone through a lot. And then all of my problems and sufferings looked so insignificant. I couldn't handle the thought of what would happen if they were left in the hands of someone who didn't care. So I immersed myself in the task at hand, determined to provide the finest possible life for these children. The children eventually returned home. Their residence. I suppose they were as excited to see me as I was to see them, and I hugged them for five minutes. I was their mother, and I vowed to be the best mother in the world. I learned how to make their favorite meals, spent many hours playing with them, and made sure they knew they were loved and cared for. Of course, there were many hiccups along the road. The kids would sometimes act out, throwing tantrums or refusing to listen to me. And there were times when I felt like I was failing, wondering if I was doing enough to help them recover from their trauma. 
My work was hurting, and I couldn't afford it since I needed money to accomplish this well. I occasionally think of William. If only he was with me. He would have adored these children as much as I did, and I would have received financial assistance because, gosh, raising children is costly. Well, I wish I could summon the confidence to contact him again and discuss our disagreements. Someday, I'd like to be back with an incredible man, but despite it all, I continued pushing forward and never giving up on these two little beings who had been thrust into my life, and gradually, I saw the rewards of my labor. The kids began to open up to me, revealing their concerns and dreams, and they embraced me tighter, told me they loved me more frequently, and trusted me to guide them through life's obstacles. They eventually recognized I was becoming more than just their guardian, but their mother. It wasn't always easy, but it was always worthwhile. One of the most satisfying experiences of my life was watching these two children develop and thrive in my care. Looking back on this trying time, I can't help but be thankful for the unanticipated turn of circumstances that brought these children into my life. They taught me the true meaning of selflessness, of putting others' needs before my own, and they demonstrated that no matter how difficult a task appears, anything is attainable with persistence and love. And I sincerely appreciate it. Life has been incredible for the past four months, and so much has transpired recently. I was left to pick up the pieces of Amma's shattered family, and the kids have been home for 45 days today. If I'm correct, Emma is now five months pregnant and things have changed. I'm not sure if I should call Emma and see how she's doing. It would not have been easy for her to lose her children, especially since she is expecting, but I built this new life for us. I've got the youngsters under my control. We are learning and making memories every day. The prospect of her reappearing in our lives caused me to reconsider. I even changed jobs to one that permits me to work from home. On this job, I met a few other mothers who frequently came over with their children for playdates. I would have been content if someone had informed me a few months ago that my life was about to improve dramatically. I would have laughed at them. On a Saturday, I invited some co-workers and their children to my house. We were relaxing in the backyard with our coffee while the kids played. It was almost like a dream. All of a sudden, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Emma had been given a job at the company where I work, but she had declined it on purpose. The information came from a co-worker who had heard it from someone at the company. She had apparently been offered the junior position, which paid well and provided perks. Emma, on the other hand, declined. Her rationale was that she did not want to work for peanuts and was looking for a better opportunity. It was a silly reason. This was the breaking point in my life. I wanted to walk up to her and slap her across the face. She was taking advantage of my generosity and using me to sustain her entitled and lazy lifestyle. Everything is now obvious. Her incessant partying, abandoning her children, and getting pregnant without hesitation. She had been manipulating me the entire time, simply to get me to take on the duty of a child. She longed to go back to Emma, but she realized it was impossible with her kids around. This is why she visited my residence six months ago. This is why she slept with Noah. Emma wanted him to leave him for cheating and to apologize for what he had done to Emma. I have no idea why she was considering becoming pregnant. What was Emma going to do with this unborn baby if she didn't want children? I was enraged, hurt, and dissatisfied. How could anybody be that self-centered and manipulative? And this is how she compensated me for taking her and her children in when they had nowhere else to go. By refusing to accept responsibility and prioritizing her own interests over those of her child and mine. I couldn't let this go. I had to confront her one more time and compel her to confront the truth. I contacted her to get an explanation, but no one answered at first. A woman called a few hours later and asked whether I was Mia. I knew the voice right away. Emma responded. Are you there, Mia? Could you please pay me a visit to this hospital? 
I dropped the kids off with neighbors before sprinting there. I couldn't help but wonder what was going on. Why, after all, did Emma answer the phone? Was she aware of the truth regarding Noah and Emma? Emma and Emma, or are they reuniting? I arrived at the hospital with a million inquiries and realized Emma had been located. Emma stood outside Emma's room. What's going on, Emma? We lost the baby, Mia. What the hell happened? Emma, where are you? Is she alright? She is undergoing treatment. We'll just have to wait. How did this happen, Emma? Emma begins to speak. Emma arrived at my place intoxicated two months ago, in the middle of the night. That's when I found out about the pregnancy. She yelled at me for wrecking her life and for Noah's betrayal. She couldn't even stand on her own two feet since she was so inebriated. I told her we'd chat in the morning and that she could sleep on the couch tonight. I immediately questioned Noah if Emma was telling the truth. And, when I questioned him, he acknowledged getting her pregnant and apologized profusely. I left him there and told him to do the right thing for once and look after Emma and their unborn child. I told Emma to go and informed her that I didn't want anything to do with Noah. Noah was the last person I ever saw. Emma kept calling me over the course of a few weeks. And I kept telling her I needed to move on. She came to my place last night, drunk as a skunk, and I opened the door. She quickly passed out, and I rushed her to the hospital because she was bleeding. I had a feeling something was amiss with the baby. According to the doctor, she had been drinking extensively and had no intention of keeping the baby. Emma left after telling me everything that had happened, and she told me to inform Emma about it. She is progressing in her life. And he doesn't want anything to do with her. I stayed outside Emma's bed for a few hours until she finally woke up, looked at me, and whispered, I'm sorry, Mia. I was no longer enraged. That's not an excuse, Emma, as I managed to say. You had an opportunity for your child and yourself, but you passed it up. How could you be so self-centered? I realize I made a mistake. I apologize. Can't we simply let it go and move on? No, we can't just ignore it. Emma, you must accept responsibility for your actions. You can't simply run away from your problems and expect someone else to solve them. It's not fair to you or me. I stated it unequivocally. We talked for a bit more, but Emma was clearly unwilling to accept responsibility for her conduct. She felt entitled to and deserving of better. I realized I had to take control of the situation and do what was best for me. It was now time for me to choose myself and leave that institution. Emma and her issues were forever lost to me. I didn't want to see her again. First, she had children recklessly. Then she met Emma and tried to trick me into caring for her children so she could live happily ever after with Emma. And when she finds out Emma is with Noah, she tries to seduce Noah in order to punish Emma, despite never intending to keep the baby. I can't believe someone could be so malicious. I'm finished. This event taught me a great lesson. I realized that we must occasionally make difficult decisions in order to achieve what is best for ourselves and the people around us. Even if it involves confronting those we love, I also learned that sometimes we have to let go of toxic people who simply refuse to accept responsibility for their actions. I felt well enough to call William. He was overjoyed to hear my voice, as was I, rainbows and stars shone together in the sky. I eventually realized that William wanted me to stop my pain. He urged me to start with myself. He was overjoyed when I told him I had gained custody of the children. We both agreed to take things slowly and postpone the wedding for the time being. I was healing slowly but steadily. I learned that life is full of unexpected twists and turns and that the people we trust the most can sometimes be the ones who hurt us the most. But, in the end, we must pick ourselves up and dust ourselves off. And keep moving. 
Well, as I reflect on the dark period in my life, I understand that the night six months ago was a watershed moment. It showed me that I am stronger than I ever imagined and that I can overcome even the most traumatic events. Emma was my sister, but her behavior demonstrated that she was not someone I wanted in my life. I had to let her go, no matter how painful it was. I hope she learns from her error and works to improve herself. But for the time being, I'm preoccupied with two little children who require my love and care.